Hi, I'm Ariana. I'm a junior in arts and sciences, majoring in Italian and German studies. I've been working with the LSC for almost two years now as a tutor and a study skills workshop facilitator. Hi, I'm Stephanie. I'm in the College of Arts and Sciences. I'm a sophomore majoring in psychology, and I also am minoring in Latino studies program and migration. And I've been working for the LSC for about two semesters as a workshop facilitator. So first we're going to talk about our initial experiences as students at Cornell and some things that we might have done differently and advice that we would have given our younger selves. So the first thing that I wish I had done differently or had thought about more in my first two years at Cornell was trying to find a balance between things that I wanted to do academically, things that I maybe should have done academically in terms of career or things that would have been more life skills, um, things that I should have learned or you know, classes that I, I probably should have taken and being involved in extracurricular activities and working outside of school. I think some semesters I had really academic heavy semesters. Other times I was more involved in activities and work. And I think it was hard for me to find a balance between those things, how much to be involved, how little to be involved or how, how intense uh, what kind of intense schedule I should be taking, or how much to explore my interests outside of my majors, how much to be thinking practically, like should I be taking a finance class, should I be taking statistics, um, so I think that's something that I should have thought about differently, because, you know, as once you kind of figure out your majors, you're almost like halfway through Cornell sometimes, and then you have um, less freedom to be taking the things that you want, or you have to fulfill other requirements. So I think thinking about that balance early on is really important so that you can get uh, required classes out of the way and explore your interests and other things that you think will be useful to you. Secondly, I think you should not underestimate yourself or be let yourself be discouraged by other people. I think you have to kind of be confident in the fact that you know yourself. You've been a student for a really long time by the time you get to Cornell. So you know how you are in an academic setting. That being said, Cornell is different than college, but you still know your, your attitudes as a student in general. I think the first semester I was in a different college um, that was not arts and sciences and the, the requirements were a little bit different. There was a, a stricter limit on the classes that we could take, the number of credits, and they were not happy with the schedule that I had picked, the, the academic advisors there, and they discouraged me from wanting to take those classes. And I, I still wanted to take them. I still wanted to, to have that experience, uh, even though it was slightly above the credit limit or classes that they didn't recommend me taking that early. Um, and I'm glad that I didn't, um, that I didn't change my schedule because of that conversation. But at the same time, I think I definitely still felt like some things were going to be too hard for me or to explore a completely new interest outside of my majors was going to be too difficult. Like, classes that I had never taken before, like computer science or certain kinds of math classes. So I think uh, it's good to challenge us. It's good to not uh, let yourself be underestimated, but to also still continue to challenge yourself. Yeah, I think I have a lot of um, similar experiences when it comes to that. As I entered college, I already knew that I wanted to be a psych major. So that was kind of figured out. Um, but I think the biggest thing that I would tell people is to like really explore um, other academic interests you have. Um, because I think that sometimes when you're trying to make your schedule, you might feel really overwhelmed with the amount of credits you have to take um, for that particular, um, the requirements for that particular major and also just the school you're in. And when you have like all these requirements like on top of each other, like you kind of might not be taking classes that you're actually interested in. Uh, hopefully you are interested in the classes that are offered for your major. But for me, I, um, I was really interested in my psych courses, but I also really wanted to explore other topics. And I have a very deep passion for immigration reform. So I decided to um, you know, connect back to my heritage being half Latina and do um, the LSP program. And then also do the minor in migration just so I'm more well knowledge and informed about the topic. So I would say that even if you don't know anyone in these classes and um, it's something a little bit new for you and it, I would say to like take that chance and like kind of like challenge yourself and like explore your academic interests because 
like one really good thing about college and Cornell is that there's just a diverse amount of classes and so many different topics and stuff. So I think it's really great for um, students to not just solely focus on getting certain classes done just for requirements sake. Yeah. Um, and the second tip would have to be um, like time management. And I think that's time management and just like how to manage the classes and your syllabus and everything is it's like a huge learning experience for everyone and everyone receives it a lot differently um, depending on your major and so some people might feel extremely stressed out if they're like pre-med or in their the engineering school while others might feel that they don't really know how to study for a certain class um, I think that the way you study in college can be it's really different from the way that you study in high school um, so I think that taking time to know what works for you and not stacking all of your prelims to study for like a week before or just kind of organizing your time effectively is a really good um, thing to learn your freshman year um, because it kind of sets the path on how you organize your schedule, your time. Um, when you get towards like the more advanced classes, your sophomore, junior, uh, senior year, um, maybe other and it kind of like sets the path for also you learning more about yourself and what your limits are so like what credits how many credits you can take so that's like another piece of advice i would give uh first years so the next part is going to be things to do to prepare for the end of the semester so i think before i said it's good to know yourself academically but i think it's also really important in terms of studying and time management to know yourself socially so towards the end of the semester uh typically in the spring more than, more so than in the winter semester we we tend to have a lot of social activities going on a lot of things that you want to be a part of but it's also time to start studying start working on final assignments so I think what I did that worked well for me was to pick and choose what events I thought would be the most fun for me, would be the most worthwhile. Uh, I didn't want to go to things that I knew I wouldn't really have that much fun that would also set me back in terms of studying. So I think uh, it's, again, finding the right balance between what what is something that you really want to do, what's going to be a really fun experience for you, what's going to help you bond with other students versus what's just going to tire you out, what's going to make it more difficult to start studying again. And I think that stepping back sometimes really helped me to be able to organize myself, start studying calmly on, you know, full night's sleep, not feeling tired, uh, especially because I usually had a lot of writing based uh, assignments. So I had final papers to write. And for me, it's not something that I could just get up and do it. I had, I had to really spend a lot of time thinking and outlining and, and working on it. So I would have a good final product. Secondly, I think it's also really important to take breaks. So aside from social events, just like on those days when you're fully studying and getting work done in those final periods, you also have to schedule breaks yourself. Like if you, let's say you go to the library when you kind of go to the library again normally with a friend and you make a plan, okay, like at this time we're going to go get lunch, right? This time we're going to walk over to another library. I think library hopping or just moving around your study space is really helpful in terms of helping you recharge, get some different scenery, and be really productive. Also like getting outside, taking walks, getting some exercise in, or just being a little bit more active since you're sitting all day, making sure like that you're drinking water, um, all that kind of stuff so that you, you feel good. Um, for the end of the semester, I like to kind of finish it off strong by one of the biggest things I do is that um, I, again, like go through like my bullet journal and I like make a calendar and like I write down all of the most important things that um, is due. So just like if I have like a final paper due or if there's a test coming up, I'll just write it down. And I'll also write down like other really important things I have to do. So if, if it's like, oh, I have to go to work today or that day, I'm gonna put it in there. If I have a Zoom call with someone, I'll put that in there. So kind of just like organizing my time so I know exactly what I have to do every single day, I think that kind of gives me a peace of mind because if I didn't know what I was doing every single day, I'd kind of be thinking about, oh my God, there's all these tasks I have to do. And it kind of gives you like so much anxiety for no reason. Um, a second thing is that 
I think just hanging out with friends and like laughing and just being social, um, safely socially distancing, I think it's like really important because it gets your mind off a lot of things. And I think one thing I really also like tying back to the first question, one thing I learned since being at Cornell and having like so much stress from work is that sometimes you're just like not gonna get through all of your notes, um, the required readings. And, you know, there'll be some days where I'm like studying all day, grinding all day, and then I'm like, oh, but I still really want to get to um, tomorrow's notes. So like, I know things in advance, but, but there's also the opportunity to like go hang out with a friend for a couple hours. And you're kind of like in this dilemma of like, oh, but I really want to like be ahead, but also just want to hang out. And I think sometimes you kind of just have to tell yourself that it's a lot better for you to take that break. If you know that you're going to be more productive and like rejuvenated after spending time with someone. So that's something I also like keep in mind at the end of the semester when the stress is building. Um, the third thing would have to be um, understanding how important your mental health is, especially um, during times of, we're currently during the election. So that on top of um, semifinal season, it's just like it collides. You can also have a lot of personal things going on that, or other responsibilities at clubs and organizations. So I think um, understanding that your mental health comes first and, you know, either making an appointment with CAPS or going to ears um, or even contacting your friends is like a really good way to keep your mental health in check. And it's also really important to give yourself break days, especially during when the times you're like studying constantly because your brain just won't be able to absorb information if you're constantly doing work and you're not sleeping great, not eating great. So it's really important to take care of yourself. And something else that I want to add in terms of time management is that during finals periods, or I guess the semester as well, semi-final periods, it might be really easy to just say, okay, I have you know a test on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm going to study for the test until Monday, then study for the next one until Wednesday, then the next one until Friday, or when you also have papers going on too. So basically the better way to organize your time is to work on everything at once or study a little bit of everything at once because then you'll you'll remember it better your memory recall will be better over time you'll be able to get chunks of your work done your papers as well as studying um during the same week and also it's it's like a way of giving yourself a break even though you're still going to be working on other things or studying other things it's still a way of transitioning your brain from one thing to another and you'll know, sometimes i've written papers or i studied for exams and i i think to myself okay this is as much as i can do today so when you kind of have that um, going back and forth between different subjects i think you can be more productive okay thank you so much for listening good luck this semester yeah, thank you guys so much for listening and find methods that work best for you.